Hello everyone. This is our first lecture for chapter 14 on correlations and regression. Here are the learning objectives for chapter 14. This is what we're going to cover and this is what you'll need to know for the final. Think of these learning objectives as your roadmap through the chapter and your study guide for the final. So take a minute, hit the pause button, and read through these. In this lecture video, we will introduce correlations, discuss the characteristics of relationships, scatter plots, and the Pearson R correlation coefficient. Up to this point, we have used hypothesis tests to compare groups of scores using means and variances. However, some research situations do not involve comparing groups. For example, a researcher can investigate the relationship between two variables, like IQ and creativity, by measuring both variables within a single group of individuals. Let's begin our discussion on correlations with what is an association. To be associated means that two things go together or co-vary. For example, people with higher income in dollars are likely to have higher life expectancy in years. This means that income and life expectancy co-vary or are associated or related to each other. Correlation is a statistical procedure that is used to measure and describe the linear relationship between two variables. Usually two variables are simply observed as they exist naturally in the environment. There's no attempt to control or manipulate the variables. A correlation is a numerical value that describes and measures three characteristics of the relationship between X and Y where x is variable 1 and y is variable 2. So the first characteristic, the direction of the relationship. The sign of the correlation, positive or negative, describes the direction of the relationship. 2. The form of the relationship. A linear relationship is most common. And 3. The strength of the relationship. The correlation coefficient determines the strength or magnitude of the relationship, which varies from 0 to plus or minus 1. So what is a correlation coefficient? It is a single number that summarizes the linear relationship between two variables. That number varies between 1 and plus or minus 1. The higher the number, the stronger the association or relationship, or the more they co-vary. A correlation coefficient close to zero means that there is little to no association or relationship between the two variables. A correlation coefficient close to plus or minus one means that there is an almost perfect association or relationship. Each correlation coefficient gives us a precise strength and direction of the relationship or linear relationship between two variables. Here is a table to help you determine the strength of associations or linear relationships based on correlation coefficients. As you can see, a coefficient greater than or equal to 0.5 means that this is a strong relationship. A coefficient that is between 0.3 and 0.49 is considered a moderate relationship. A coefficient between 0.1 and 0.29 is considered a weak relationship. And a coefficient less than 0.1 is considered very weak to no relationship. The sign of a correlation coefficient tells us the direction of a linear relationship positive or negative. A positive correlation coefficient means that the two variables have a positive linear relationship. This means that the two variables increase and decrease together. 
the two variables tend to change in the same direction. As the value of x increases from one individual to another, the y variable tends to increase. When the x variable decreases, the y variable also decreases. Examples of positive relationships, as temperature goes up, beer sales go up. As skills go up, income goes up. As, cigarettes, as smoking cigarettes increases, so does coronary heart disease mortality. Amount of time spent studying increases, so does test scores. A negative correlation coefficient means that the two variables have a negative linear relationship. This means that the two variables move in opposite directions. The two variables tend to go in opposite directions. As the x variable increases, the y variable decreases and vice versa. It is an inverse relationship. Examples of negative relationships, as temperature goes up, hot coffee sales go down. Higher self-esteem, lower depression scores. Lower absences, higher grades. Hotter weather, lower heating costs. The strength of a relationship is not affected by direction. A coefficient of, point, of negative 0.25 is equally as strong as a coefficient of positive 25. So the sign of the coefficient does not matter in terms of strength. Scatter plots are graphs that researchers use to plot each case or observation. Each axis represents the value of one variable. Scatter plots provide us with a visual estimate of the strength and direction of a linear relationship. Here is an example of a scatter plot for education and income. As you can see, it is linear and positive. As variable x goes up, so does variable y. Here are some more scatter plots that visually re represent different types of relationships. The most common correlation coefficient is the Pearson R, or the Pearson Product Moment Correlation, which measures the degree or strength and the direction of the linear relationship between two continuous variables. The Pearson correlation is identified by the letter R. Conceptually, this correlation is calculated by R equal to the degree to which X and Y vary together divided by degree to which X and Y vary separately, which is equal to covariability of X and Y divided by variability of X and Y separately. When there is a perfect linear relationship, every change in the X variable is accompanied by a corresponding change in the Y variable. For example, every time the value of X increases, there is a perfectly predictable decrease or increase in the value of Y. The result is a perfect linear relationship with X and Y always varying together. In this case, covariability X and Y together is identical to the variability of X and Y separately. And the formula produces a correlation with a magnitude of one, a positive one, or negative one. At the other extreme, when there is no relation, linear relationship, a change in the X variable does not correspond to any predictable change in the y variable. In this case, there is no covariability and the resulting correlation is zero. To calculate the Pearson correlation, it is necessary to introduce one new concept, the sum of products of deviations, or SP for short. This new value is similar to sum of squares, or the sum of squared deviations which is used to measure variability for a single variable. Now, 
we can use sum of products to measure the amount of covariability between two variables. The value for sum of products can be calculated with either a definitional formula or a computational formula. Here is the definitional formula for the sum of products. The definitional formula emphasizes sum of products as the sum of two different scores. The computational formula is easier to calculate. You may notice that the formulas for sum of products are similar to the formulas you learned for sum of squares. The Pearson correlations consists of a ratio comparing the covariability of x and y in the numerator with the variability of x and y separately in the denominator. In the formula for the Pearson R, we use sum of products to measure the covariability of x and y. The variability of x is measured by calculating sum of squares for the x scores, and the variability of y is measured by sum of squares for the y scores. So r is equal to sum of products divided by the square root of sum of, of, sum of squares for x times sum of squares for y. The main use for correlations is to make predictions. If two variables have a strong linear relationship, then we can use one variable to make predictions about the other. Other uses for correlations are to demonstrate the validity, the validity and reliability of a new test for measuring a phenomenon. One of the most common errors in interpreting correlations is to assume that a correlation implies a cause and effect relationship between two variables. Establishing causation requires an experiment where one variable is manipulated and others carefully controlled. Whenever a correlation is calculated from a set of scores, you should be cautious in interpreting the correlation. Our correlation coefficient is affected by the range of scores in the data. To be safe, never generalize a correlation beyond the range of data. Generalizing beyond the set of scores is what we call extrapolation. An outlier is an individual with x and or y value, values that is very different, larger or smaller, from the other values in the sample. Looking at a scatter plot will help determine if the sample contains outliers or extreme scores. Outliers affect correlation coefficients. Remember from t-statistic hypothesis testing, r-squared measures the proportion of variability in the data that's explained by the independent variable or the relationship between x and y. r-squared is called the coefficient of determination because it measures the, pro the proportion of variability in one variable that can be determined from the relationship with the other variable. In the next video, we will discuss different types of correlation coefficients and regression.